Hello everybody. This video's featured creature is the Potter Wasp. You're a wizard, Harry. No, not that Potter. It's referring to an artist who creates ceramic bowls and vases and pots. The potter wasp is so called because the female creates tiny pots out of mud which are used as nurseries for her offspring. Currently there are 8 species and 10 subspecies of eumines known in America, north of Mexico. And for this video, I will focus on one species, eumines fraternus, the fraternal potter wasp. These wasps make the familiar jug-like, marble-sized mud nests found on buildings, windowsills, screens, and shrubs around homes. Although many wasps make mud nests, the jug-like pots of eumines are not easily confused with those of other species. Entomologists and horticulturalists consider these wasps beneficial as they prey on insects that are deemed pests, such as inchworms and other caterpillars. Well, they don't actually eat the caterpillars, they provide them to their young. Little detailed information is available on the biology of any of the North American species of eumines. Fraternal potter wasp females build their little clay pots in many environments, including on tree branches, on the sides of structures, and even window screens, as mentioned previously. I once found one on a concrete porch. Potter wasps are related to mud daubers. However, rather than gather mud from a moist location, potter wasps carry water in their mouth and mix it with dry soil. The female makes dozens and dozens of trips between the nesting location and her source of nesting material. With each return trip, she brings a ball of mud with which she shapes the pot. Upon completion of the nesting pot, she will straddle the structure and lay an egg inside. Once the egg is attached to the inside, she will then fly off in search of food for the future larva. When the female finds potential prey, usually a small caterpillar, she will deliver a sting which will paralyze it, but it will remain alive until the larva eventually consumes it. Each brood cell will usually contain between one and a dozen caterpillars, depending on the size of the caterpillars. Once the larva becomes an adult, it will leave the brood cell by chewing a hole through the side of the pot, as seen here which is the thinnest part. The new adult will then leave and begin the cycle again. However, much like everything else in life, it doesn't always go to plan. With this particular pot, a horde of carpenter ants chewed their way inside and tore apart the larva within and then ate the pieces. It was quite brutal, but nature often is. With this one particular potter wasp, she finished crafting her pot, laid an egg, then began hunting and bringing back prey for her offspring. However, while she was away on one of the trips, this fly, which I believe was a species of satellite fly, came up, inspected the dwelling, then backed up and presumably laid her own larva on one of the caterpillars within. These flies deposit live larvae on the prey of wasps such as this, so the prey becomes food for the fly's larvae instead of the wasps. The potter wasp in question eventually abandoned all her hard work at the nesting pot 
and I wondered if the fly was the reason why. Potter wasps are capable of stinging, but females do not defend their nests and they are rarely aggressive. While the larvae eat caterpillars and such, adults feed on nectar, pollen, and tree sap. Although it is related to mud daubers, the fraternal potter wasp is about half the size of most mud daubers. They measure from about half an inch in length to maybe three quarters of an inch in length. These wasps have a distinctive look. Whereas mud daubers have a very thin petiole or waist, potter wasps have a waist that is somewhat swollen, as seen here. The fraternal potter wasp is black with ivory markings on the abdomen and thorax. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you.